Welcome back to the nostalgic future. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Homebrew channel via Letterbomb. And we're going to need a small SD card. And I like to use a USB drive to install all of my backup games. So I'll teach you how to do that as well. Now before we can get started installing Letterbomb, we need to get a 2 gigabyte SD card or smaller. If you only have a larger one, you can use the disk partition wizard to delete the entire partition and then create only a small 2 gigabyte partition and make sure to format it as FAT32. It's very important. Now that we've done a little bit of the work, I want to go ahead and just show some b-roll of what the homebrew channel looks like after you've got everything installed because there's a few other prerequisites that we need to get taken care of before we can push forward. And I want to use this time to tell you what you need to do and how to do it. That being said, now that you have your SD card ready, use this time to go and find your MAC address in your system version on your Wii and input it on the fields on the Letterbomb website and download the version of Letterbomb that you need. Once you have it downloaded, just simply extract it straight to the root of your SD card. Once you've done that, we should be ready to run Letterbomb, but we need to do one more thing. If you plan to use a USB hard drive or SSD or USB thumb drive even, you're going to have to get it ready first. You have to format it in FAT32. Windows doesn't really like to format large drives in FAT32, so I've got a link in the description to a tool that you can use that's really easy that'll let you just immediately format whatever drive you want to as FAT32. That way it's going to work with the Wii. That's a problem I always forget about and run into every time I do this again. And also, you should be able to use NTFS as the file format on your external hard drive, but I always have problems with that as well, so I always use that tool and set it as FAT32 because I never have any problems when I do that. And once you've got it formatted, then you just need to follow the links in the description to the USB Loader GX, Nintendo, and the CIOS installer. Just have those downloaded and ready and on hand because we're going to need them here in a few minutes. Now let's just recap. We have our SD card, less than 2 gigabytes, in FAT32 with our Letterbomb download. We have our USB drive, also formatted in FAT32 because we're going to need it as soon as we get the Homebrew channel installed to install USB Loader GX, Nintendo, and the CIOS installer. That's another step that I always forget and I'll get really far and everything will just not work. The CIOS installer is what installs the things that you need to actually open the Wii games whenever you have USB Loader GX. So now that we know we have everything we need, what we're going to be doing is first using Letterbomb to install the Homebrew channel and then we're going to install a CIOS version. Then we're going to install USB Loader GX and Nintendo. Then after that, I'm going to show you how you can rip Wii games directly from the disk, and then how you can run downloaded GameCube ISOs and use a real GameCube controller. Now, if you put your SD card in and you try to run Letterbomb and the message doesn't open, you probably got your system menu version or the MAC address wrong. Just double check those, make sure they're right, and try it again. It will work. I also put the wrong system menu version in when I was trying to make this video. Now, when you start up your Wii for the first time, this is what it's going to look like whenever you're looking for your letter bomb message. Just go down to the right, open your messages. If there's nothing there, just move forward or backward a page and it should appear. Just like this. If it still doesn't appear, your system date is probably set on the wrong day. Now here is the setup for installing the homebrew channel. It was as easy as that. Running Letterbomb is just as easy as that. It's over. Now we're installing the Homebrew channel. It takes 30 seconds, but I'm not going to show you all that. I'm just going to cut forward. Wait 30 seconds, and then press 1. 
Now, I just want to use this little app here only to install the homebrew channel. So I'm just going to continue. Install the homebrew channel. Yes, continue. Success. Now let's just go ahead and exit. Exit. And we are in the homebrew channel. But there's nothing here. But that's awesome. Also, make sure and have your Wii connected to the internet. That's going to come in handy with this. Now that we've installed and ran the homebrew channel for the first time, it should have installed its file structure under the USB drive. So unplug your USB drive from your Wii, go to your computer, and you should see an apps folder. If you don't see an apps folder, create one. Now, just take all of the files we downloaded to begin with, USB Loader GX, Nintendo, and the CIOS installer, and just extract their contents directly into the apps folder. That's the way that you install apps to the Homebrew channel, normally. You normally just take the files that are inside the download for whatever app you're downloading and just extract them straight into the apps folder on your USB drive for the Wii. Th then they just appear. You can see here I've got most of the emulators installed from the final link in the description down below. But now we need to install the CIOS version. You should now see the CIOS installer on your Homebrew channel. Just open it and follow the on-screen prompts. First of all, just press any button to continue. Now, we are going to set specific settings here. What it's going to end up being, I have a link in the description as well. We're going to use the version 10 beta 52. We want base 57 and then slot 249 then finally version 65535 check to confirm and then continue again that's version 10 57 249 65 535 Then press A to continue. It's going to ask you and confirm block 249, yes, and then it will continue to install. Go ahead and just let it do its thing. We shouldn't run into any problems here. And if it looks like it's paused, just let it continue. It always tells you if it fails. I've never seen it just hang. Okay, so what we're seeing here is block 249 should be green, which confirms our install was successful, and we can exit. With that step now out of the way, you should be able to use this as you wish without running into any issues. So I'm going to go ahead and open up USB Loader GX. Now as you can see, I've already got a few ROMs already ripped to my SSD, but I'm going to go ahead and show you just how easy it really is to rip a Wii game directly to a hard drive using a Wii. It's just as easy as grabbing a Wii game. Yeah. Let's do Super Mario Galaxy. Pop it in. Disk insert detected. Go ahead and install. Now, this takes quite a long time. You are just ripping a DVD. It's gonna take a few minutes. 
So I'm not gonna show the entire install on video. I'm just gonna cut forward. I also love that the light stays on the entire time you're ripping the game as well. Or at least this one does. And once you have waited through your install, if you're connected to the internet, it should download the thumbnail, which is awesome. Now that we've got the Wii side covered, and yes, you can totally just download the appropriate Wii ROMs, and they'll show up as well. Let's run GameCube. Set Nintendon to USB. Now, you can just boot GameCube games straight from the disc, or you can put game ISOs in a specific folder on the USB drive and boot them straight from there also. It's really handy. Now as you can see I had a lot of GameCube games already backed up on that USB drive as well. And you can see there just above the boot GameCube disc examples of the paths that I used for my ROMs. USB, just a folder called games, and then said ISO. Go ahead and just give one a try. I know in this video there is a lot of information and getting a Wii hacked and getting it able to back up discs and run downloaded ROMs and run GameCube downloaded ROMs is, it's really painstaking. And it takes a lot of effort. But once you get there, it's so fantastic, especially after some time and you get a library built up of a few games and you don't have to really tinker with anything anymore. It's it's the perfect emulator. Not only does it really accurately emulate just about any old console or even computer, but it can run its own games and GameCube games from USB drives or SD cards. So as far as, as, far as Nintendo consoles go, this is the gold standard to me for emulation. And as always, I appreciate every one of you, especially this time, the ones who stuck around all this long. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope to see you back on. The Nostalgic Future.